I'm a forensic anthropologist, which means that I study the remains of people from the past. We will look at skeletonized or partially skeletonized remains and assess age at death, the cause of death, the means of death, sex, uh, ethnicity, and any other kind of biological signal which will help us identify those people. They are always the remains of people from the past, people who had complex lives, who were loved, who were interred, assuming by their families that they probably would remain there forever, and we're very mindful of that. When we are working with individuals from the recent past, we may have quite a good idea of how people's lives, how their life course might have panned out. But as soon as you start looking at material and skeletons from further in the past, it's like a foreign country. And actually understanding the life history of individuals is a hugely rich way of, of entering the world of, of that past. But also when you add that into a population level, it can give you an incredible insight into the lives of real people in the past. In this exhibition, our aim was to explain the science of forensic anthropology through the display and discussion of archaeological material and material from a pathological collection from the 18th and 19th centuries held by the University of Bristol and uh, Bristol Museums and the Museum of, of London, supported largely by the Wellcome Trust and open out the discussion of that science to the community of Bristol. The exhibition is quite a simple construct. We have a human skeleton, we have a piece of information about the site that they came from, and then we can expand on that because each one of those comes from a particular point in time. It's been very successful, it's beaten all of our targets, and we're expecting more than 50,000 visitors to have experienced this space and the result of the work that we've done with the university. The Society of Bristol today is enormously diverse um, and, and rich and vibrant and I think sometimes we have a sense that maybe that's, that's new. But the work that we've been doing in the city and the surrounding areas of Bristol on these remains show that actually that is something that's been characteristic of Bristol for a very long time. We are an exciting port city, we have many communities flowing in and out, huge expansion in the 18th, 19th centuries. and. Um, we can give life, I think, to those populations through this kind of, of, of exhibition and through this kind of work to the living community of Bristol today.